All right, so the purpose of this is to look at using freezing point depression as an analytical uh, tool for determining molar mass. And so in order to do that, there's a few things that I have to know about this process. The first thing I have to know about this process or understand about this process is that anytime I add solute to any pure solvent, the freezing temperature will be lowered. This is because it requires more energy to force order onto that system and create a crystal. Um, there's a much deeper entropy explanation for this that we'll talk about when we cover thermodynamics, but essentially for now, just trust me that the increased disorder requires more energy to be removed from the system. The next thing I need to be sure I understand is the, what this actually depends on. There's a series of variables that go into this um, depression. And so that freezing point depression depends first on the identity of the solvent. Every solvent has um, its own constant that relates how it is disrupted by particles. Then I need to know the molality of whatever solute I place in the solvent. So this is going to depend, um, again, since it has to do with disorder, on the amount of disorder I introduce. And that's related through the molality. And then beyond that, um, for each molecule or formula unit of solute that I introduce, I have to worry about whether that breaks down or not because the more particles that the solute produces, the more disorder that's enforced and the more energy has to be removed to form a crystal. And that's related through the Vontoff factor. That tells me how many particles or the apparent number of particles that are produced when um, the solvent and solute mix together. And so this is what it looks like mathematically. The freezing point depression um, is equal to the molal freezing point constant for the solvent. So this is where the identity of the solvent comes in. Everyone has their own value. Times the molality of the solute, again telling me how many batch particles I put in. And then the Vontoff factor telling me if these particles break down or not. Now, this is always, freezing point depression is always a negative number, but since the name of it is depression, um, we can omit that negative sign if we understand the meaning of the word depression. Um, so you'll always be moving to a lower temperature. We're interested in the absolute value of that. Otherwise, we have to put a negative sign on one side or the other, so as long as we understand that, we can skip that part. Something else that's good for us to know and helpful in the long run is that for molecular solutes being dissolved in molecular solvents, um, the Vontoff factor is one. When I put a molecule in another molecule, um, typically they don't break down. And so we can use an, a one for the Vontoff factor. So for our purposes, we'll restrict the use of this um, as a, a problem solving technique largely to molecular compounds being dissolved in molecular solvents. We might, in a laboratory setting, um, be working towards solving um, the Vontoff factor for a salt, but rarely are you ever presented with the Vontoff factor for a salt and asked to find anything else because they are extremely variable and, and change depending on the concentration of the solution sometimes. And so, I mean, it's a much more complicated process when you deal with ionic compounds, so we typically don't do that. All right, so from the laboratory side, there's some information I have to collect, record, calculate, some things I have to know in order to use this as a tool. And so these are what I need to know. The first is when I make my solution, I've got to know how much solvent's going into it. Molality. Um, is related to the moles of solute and kilograms of solvent. So the use of the solvent is simple. I just measure on a balance what mass of solvent I'm using and convert it from the grams on the balance to kilograms and store that information for later. Number two, if I can't find the freezing point of the pure solvent somewhere, I have to do it myself so that I know. Um, in that case, I'm just going to take a measured sample of the pure solid uh, solvent and melt it and watch it refreeze and record the temperature at which it freezes. And then finally I have to measure the uh, freezing point of the mixture. So I'll take my known mass of solvent again that I've measured and converted into kilograms and I'll place into it a known mass of solute and I will melt them together, stir them up real well, watch them recrystallize and record the temperature at which that uh, crystal forms. 
and it should be at a lower temperature than it was for the pure solvent from number two. If that's not the case, then something's wrong because the introduction of solute always lowers the freezing point of a system. And then I'll need to know that difference, right? So that's something I can calculate. If I take the freezing point of the pure solvent and subtract from it the freezing point of the mixture, I'll get a value. I'll use that for delta T. Um, the way I do approach these problems, again, knowing that depression means negative, um, I just ignore the negative sign because obviously it's dropping. Um, so we're going to ignore the negative sign and just put the absolute value of that change in temperature. Okay, so once I know this information, I can actually do a little bit of math in order to find um, what the molar mass of my compound is from the information I've collected. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve the freezing point depression formula that delta T equals Kf times M times I. We're going to solve that for M. We'll know delta T because we said just a minute ago we're going to record the two temperatures and calculate it. We'll know Kf because we'll either calculate it in the lab by doing an experiment or we'll find it in a table. And we know, we'll know I because we're generally working with molecular compounds, so I is typically 1. Once we know the molality of the solute, we'll also know, or we should have recorded, the kilograms of solvent. I can use those two together and the definition of molality and maybe a little dimensional analysis if you prefer um, to find the moles of solute that I actually introduced when I put the mass in. And once I know the moles of solute and I know the mass of solute that I recorded in the beginning I can take those two and by def use the definition of molar mass to determine how many grams are in one mole. I will know the mass of a certain number of moles I'm going to divide the two to see how much that is for one mole. And this is a very helpful piece of information in determining molecular formula if I've already found the empirical formula um, doing something like combustion analysis. Um, the difference here being combustion analysis destroys the sample. Once I do combustion analysis, uh, it's difficult for me to use the whole molecule again to try and find uh, the, the mass of the entire piece. Combustion analysis destroys it. So if I take a small piece of the sample, do combustion analysis, find the empirical formula, take another piece of the sample and put it through this non-destructive analysis here, uh, then I can get the mass of the whole piece and then that's helpful to me. Um, something else you should be aware of, the AP exam writers love this question. So it's in your best interest to know how to solve it. Now it's in your best interest to know how to solve it um, eight months from now when you're getting ready to take your AP exam. So learn this and don't forget it. It will be useful to you. All right, so here's how we apply it in a real situation um, as far as a problem goes. And so I've got a solution of unknown non-volatile electrolyte. That's important. It can't be volatile. And that was prepared by dissolving 0.250 grams of the substance in 40.0 grams of CCL4. Uh, the freezing point of the solution is recorded to be 2.12 degrees Celsius lower than the standard freezing point of CCL4. And they want me to determine the molar mass of solute given that the freezing point depression constant for carbon tetrachloride is 29.8 degrees Celsius per mole of solute per kilogram or per molal. Now the idea that this is an electrolyte is not really a problem. We're dissolving it in CCL4 so even if it is a salt what little will dissolve in CCL4 will not dissociate because CCL4 is not polar and is not capable of dissociating anything. So even if it is a salt it's not going to dissociate. So the Vontoff factor is still one. And so the first step, we've solved um, our freezing point depression formula for molality. Molality is equal to the change in freezing temperature, which they told me was 2.12 degrees Celsius lower. I didn't even have to subtract this time. They just told me. Um, I'm going to divide that by Kf. And so dividing that by Kf, uh, which is 29.8 degrees, degrees Celsius per molal, and also divide by I, which is 1. And that leads me to know that I have 0 0.0711 moles per kilogram of whatever this solute happens to be. 
in step two we're going to use a little dimensional analysis I know that I have 0 0.0711 moles of solute per kilogram of CCL4 I also happen to know that I used 40 grams of CCL4 which means I have 0 0.04 kilograms of CCL4 um, calculating that shows me that I have 0 0.00285 moles of whatever this solute is so now I have two critical pieces of information I know that I have 0 0.00285 moles of solute and I know that that came from 0.25 grams of solute and so I'll apply the definition of molar mass take the grams divided by the moles and that shows me I have 87.9 grams per mole uh, for the molar mass of my solute and so now if I have an empirical formula I can find the mass of the empirical formula use the mass of this molecular formula to find what value I need to multiply my subscripts by to see my formula for my whole molecule and that's a whole nother lecture in itself that you can jump back and look at if you don't remember how empirical formulas and molecular formulas work together or, or built off each other um, but this is a key component to that process knowing the mass of the whole molecule and this is a non-destructive alternative way to find it um, that can be very helpful to you